Great, I'm happy four of you are happy to be here tonight. Uh, we're continuing our series, Surviving the Holidays. Actually, I think this is the last part of the series. Am I right? This is the last part of our series. Uh, and we are talking tonight about how to maintain a healthy family during Christmas, all right? How to maintain a healthy family. So here is kind of the overview of the message, how to maintain a healthy family. One, don't eat as many cookies. Two, drink less eggnog. And three, I know it's cold outside, but get exercise, all right? That will keep your family healthy. Let's pray. I'm just kidding. That's not all the message. No, we're talking about how to keep, uh, uh, maintain a healthy family. Uh, we, here's really where we're going with this tonight, is we're talking about forgiveness. But to be honest with you, we thought if we tell you that we're talking about forgiveness tonight, some of you guys wouldn't have shown up here. Uh, so instead, we're talking about how to maintain a healthy family, and that's through forgiveness. Sound good? Are you guys awake tonight? Because if you're going to sleep, I'm just going to sleep up here too, and we're just all going to take a nap, and that's not healthy. So let's, let's, be, let's be healthy, let's be awake. Uh, but we're talking about forgiveness uh, and, and unforgiveness, which really unforgiveness isn't even a word, which is maybe you knew that or not. When I first found that out, I was like, wow, this isn't even a real word, yet we struggle with it so much. But looking at forgiveness and unforgiveness, the root of it is really offense. It's really getting offended by something, and that leads to unforgiveness. And, and Christmas is a great time, right? It, it's great. We get time off work, time off school. I heard schools get like two weeks off this year, which is amazing. I always felt like it was like four days that you got off for break, but now it's like two full weeks. You get time off of school, time off of work, spend time with family. Uh, maybe you're traveling to see, to see some family, which if you travel to see sa- family, sometimes that feels like less of a vacation and more like work uh, for some of you guys. Uh, you're, you're spending time with family. You're spending time with, with weird family. You spend time with that weird uncle. Uh, if you don't think you have a weird uncle, you're probably the weird uncle. Uh, sorry to offend you if that was you, but we're talking about offense, so now you have to forgive me. Uh, but maybe, maybe you're spending time with uh, your, your parents who uh, always make you feel like you're a failure. Uh, maybe your parents are divorced and now you're going through that and, and it's hard not to blame one of them. Uh, maybe you're spending time with a mother-in-law who is kind of overbearing and oversteps. Uh, but maybe wh- whatever it is this, this Christmas season, there's lots of unspoken tension in, the, in your family that you're spending time with. Um, But tonight I want to look at family dynamics, dealing with this unforgiveness. Maybe there's a a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, a son, a daughter uh, that that you have some bitterness towards, that that there's some unforgiveness in your your heart towards, that you've been offended and you haven't really dealt with that. Um, So we see that unforgiveness, the root of it is being offense, so how do we stop it? Tonight we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, if you have your Bible, you can follow along with me. Matthew chapter 5, we're starting in verse 21. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21, if you don't have your Bible, you can follow along on the screen. It says this, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. So what we have here is we see Jesus begins... Uh, this series of six theological upgrades, if you will. Six uh, things that that were passed down to Moses that kind of became diluted, and now he is reteaching it to the people. And what we see is he says this, is long before something happened in your life, it happened in your heart. Long before something happens in your life, it it already had happened in your heart. Uh, we, We see this command that thou shalt not murder, and if you murder, you will be subject to judgment. And we continue reading in verse 22. It says this, Uh, But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. That scares me a little bit because I've said worse things than you fool to someone, right? Anybody ever said worse things to someone than you fool? Liars are friars. Most of you guys did not raise your hands. Uh, but, But what we see here is this, is that what... What starts in the heart doesn't stay in the heart. What starts as a thought turns into an action, and that can turn your life into a living hell. We we have the capability to turn our life into a living hell by what we allow to have access to our heart. 
by, by what you allow affect your heart can turn your life into a living hell. You see, when it comes to forgiveness, uh, we, need to, we need to do this. We need to learn to forgive quickly. If you're taking notes, which I love that on our new handouts each week, there's a note side. If you're taking notes, write that down quickly. That's one of the key things tonight it is quickly. When it, when it comes to forgiveness, uh, I want to forgive Marin before she ever apologizes for the offense. I want to forgive my wife Marin before she ever apologizes for it. I want to do it quickly. Uh, if anybody here ever had a hangnail before, you ever have a hangnail, right? Hangnails are interesting because they're so small and they seem so insignificant, but if you don't deal with it, it becomes a very big problem. It, it, it causes a lot of pain if you don't deal with it quickly. Uh, we want to forgive quickly and maybe say forgive quickly. I would forgive quickly if they would apologize. I would forgive quickly if, if, they, would, if they would meet me in the middle, but maybe that's because you don't have a full understanding of what forgiveness is. Maybe you think forgiveness is all about justice. It's all about making things right, but forgiveness is all about freedom. Forgiveness is all about freedom. When, when, you, when you hold offense, when you harbor offense, you're not hurting the other person. You're only hurting you, and when you forgive, you become free from that. MLK said this, and you'll see it on the screen. It says, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a constant attitude. We say, I, I can't be quick to forgive. You're quick to get offended. You're quick to gossip. You're quick to strike back. You're quick to hurt the other person. You're quick to isolate. What if we took all of that and we put that towards forgiveness? Have you noticed that we live in a time where everyone's offended? Like everyone's offended by everything all the time. Like you can't even say Merry Christmas to some people anymore. Otherwise you might offend them. They might cry or something like that. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. But people, especially around Christmas, get offended all the time, right? Like you have a family gift exchange going on and you spend all this time thinking, anybody do the gift exchange thing where you like in your family, you pick one person, right? Is that just my family? Uh, some families, uh, you, you, you spend all this time, all this money thinking, what should I get this person? I'm going to get them the best present I could ever think of. And you give them this, this gift that you spent a lot of time, that you spent a lot of money into. And then it's your turn, and they got you a toy for your dog, right? It's, it's like you spent all this time. That may or may not have happened at one of our family Christmases one time. I'm just going to leave that out there. Uh, but, but I also found this year, I found out this year that people get really offended about when you set up your Christmas tree. Anybody noticing that? Maybe you're here and you get really offended. My wife set our tree up like two weeks before Thanksgiving. Hate me if you want to hate me. But, uh, but I, I saw people, they're getting so offended about when you set up your Christmas tree. When, when you do this stuff. I, I've got to pray for like 20 minutes before I post on social media because I'm afraid I'm going to offend someone with what I'm posting right? We live in this time where people, they, they get offended so easily. And what I found is that Christians are some of the most offended people out there, which is ironic because our whole religion is based upon a relationship with someone who wiped away every offense we ever committed against him. It's kind, it's kind of weird to me that we think that we have the right to get so offended about little things all the time. But maybe that's you, and, and we have to be careful because, because people get offended, and maybe you're the type where you get offended very easily. And, 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 and <laughs> Pastor Weaver does not get offended. You can literally tell him anything, and he will not get offended at that. But maybe that's you, and, and you get offended really easy. And, and what you find if you get offended easy is that you find that you are maybe unhappy, that, that, that you can't find happiness, that you can't find long-term happiness. Well, maybe the reason it's so hard for you to stay happy is because it's so easy for you to get offended. Make it harder to get offended makes it easier to stay happy. Don't get offended so easy. Jesus says this offense you have, if, if you entertain it, if, if you let it dwell in your heart, it will turn your life into a living hell. And what we see in Matthew is kind of this playbook. We, we see this whole idea of how Satan is going to try to get in. Because we talk about murder, and then he says he kind of comes to this whole thing of being offended. And, and I have the playbook kind of written out here for you. The first thing is this. The enemy's agenda is destruction. His, agenda, his, his overall picture is to destroy. John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Good, you're awake. He, he, his, his whole agenda is destruction. His strategy is division. So how he destroys is by dividing. In Matthew 12, 25, it says, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. He wants to destroy you, and he will do it by dividing you. And his tactic is this, offense. 
He has an offensive strategy. He's playing, he's playing offense on us. And, and, and his strategy is, is subtle. He's subtle about it. He, he's not doing something that's going to make you realize. He's not going to come into your relationship and say, hey, I'm here to steal, kill, and destroy. If he told you that, you wouldn't stand for that. But he's subtle with it. Picture, picture this. Picture that at my house, we have a, a mouse problem. Okay, we don't really have a mouse problem, but just picture this, right? And, and uh, I don't know how you catch mice. I've kind of been informed, kind of not really. I like to picture that you put cheese on a trap. I don't know if you really do put cheese on a trap, but let's just say that you put cheese on a trap. So in our house, we have mouse traps with cheese all over the place, all right? Now, how many know that that mouse is going to see the cheese and they're going to go for it because it looks good? But that's not appealing to me. That doesn't look good to me. Maren's not going to wake up in the morning, come downstairs, and go, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, look, there's cheese on the ground, and go and eat the cheese. No, she's going to say, no, that's, that's a trap. I see that trap for what it is. Satan, he's not going to give you something where you're saying, oh, that's a trap. That's, I'm not going to do that. No, he's going to make it look good for you. He's subtle. He's going to give you what you want to have. Uh, he, and he does this through the smallest of offense. Has anybody in here ever heard of a verse talking about a plank in your eye? Anybody ever heard about that? It's saying, uh, deal with the plank in your own eye before you talk about the speck in your neighbor's eye, right? Anybody know that verse? It's saying, deal with your big problems before you talk to someone about their little problems. Well, what I've noticed in a plank is it's made up of a lot of specks. If you don't deal with the speck in your eye, it's going to turn into a plank. We got to deal with these things quickly, and, and it seems like Christmas time is when a lot of this kind of comes out because we're spending time with family, spending too much time with family maybe, uh, you, you're, you're living together over a holiday break, whatever that may be, and, and the holidays bring this out. And I want you to see this, that the closer the relationship, the greater the opportunity. The closer the relationship, the greater the opportunity for intimacy, and the closer the relationship, the greater the opportunity for offense. It goes two ways. The closer the relationship, the greater the opportunity. This is why nobody can hurt you like someone you love. That's why no, no one can, can hurt you as much as someone that you've given your heart to. This is why divorce is such a big issue. Divorce, friendships being ruined, they happen one offense at a time. Jesus says you have to learn to deal with it quickly. Verse 23, Matthew chapter 5, 23 says, Therefore, if you are offering a gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. I want you to see this, that we can't even fully connect with God if we have offense in our heart. If, if, we, haven't, if we haven't asked for forgiveness, if we haven't forgiven people, we, we can't even fully connect with God. He's saying if, if you have offense against someone, if you have something against your brother or your sister and you come into the altar, you can't even fully worship or give God this gift unless you deal with that offense. And watch how bad it gets in verse 25. It says this, settle matters quickly with your adversary. What's an adversary? Students, do you know what an adversary is? No. Your adversary is your opponent, right? It's your opponent, which this confused me at first because if we go back in verse 22, it says, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother Right? It's, it's talking about brother, and now we're talking about your enemy. Why are we talking about two different people? Or is it possible that if you don't deal with problems with your brother, that they will turn into your enemy? we got to deal with this quickly. Verse 25 through 26, finish this out. It says, settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge. The judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. It all started with, with a dog toy for Christmas. Right? It all started with putting up your Christmas tree before Thanksgiving. It all started with, with telling someone uh, something that, that they took offense to, and, and you don't deal with it. it. It builds up, and it builds up, and they can turn into your enemy. So what we see is the, the enemy's agenda is destruction, his strategy is division, and his tactic is offense. And I want to kind of act this out for you. Is that okay with you guys? I want to show you what this looks like. Does that sound good? So I have a, I have a couple of volunteers that are going to come help me today. This is my wife, Marin, and my mom, Jeannie. They're going to help me. Uh, so what, what I want you to see is this fence piece. 
all right, this fence represents a fence that may get handed to you. See what I did there? Some of you are still getting it. We'll get there. We'll get there. But, but this, is, this is what Satan is going to try to do. Understand it's not a matter of if offense comes to you. It's, it's what you do with it once it's given to you. It's not a matter of if someone hurts your feelings, right? Anybody in here ever been hurt by something somebody has said? Anybody in here ever unintentionally hurt somebody by something you said? Right? It's, it's, it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if it happens. It's a, Pastor Weaver's double hands in it over there. He needs to hear this. Uh, but but we, have, we have my mom and my wife, and now my mom maybe said something to me. We're just going to kind of, do you mind if we just kind of go through some family problems up here right now? You can just stand wherever you want. I don't care. We're, we're going to work through some stuff. But maybe my mom said something to Marin that wasn't so nice, and maybe she didn't mean to say it. But you see a little backstory. Uh, Marin was up with Barrett real late. Uh, up all night kind of with him, and she, she got up in the morning, and Maren's like, all right, you know what, even though I was up late last night, today's going to be a good day, so she showered, uh, she, she did her makeup, did her hair, and then she goes over to my parents' house uh, to, to bring Baird over there, and my mom says something like this, oh, Maren, you, you look tired, you look like you, do you feel okay? You don't look like you feel good, right? And, and what, what she was just saying unintentionally could hurt someone. Anybody ever had that said to you like, oh, you look tired, and you're like, I am not tired. I am wide awake. I feel great. Who are you to tell me I don't feel good, right? And, and, she, and she said this to her, and now, and now she's handed Marin this offense, or, or something like this. Marin and I, uh, we just got, we, this is when we just got married, and we got this new house. Now I'm just making all this up, but maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'll let you decide. <laughs> we we just got married, we got this new house, and, and it's Christmas time, and Maren's like so excited, and she says, you know what, this year we want to host Christmas, and my mom has always hosted Christmas, right, so she's not too sure what to think about, so, so she decides, you know what, I'm going to talk to Jeff and see what he thinks about it, and all he's thinking is, less dishes, less cleaning, let's go, right? <laughs> But, but Marin does it, and people go over to our house, and they, they, talk, they give so many compliments, many more than what happened last year to my mom, and now she's given her this offense. Now there's this offense that has been handed over. Her next, the next Christmas, uh, we go over to my parents' house, and, and we're given Christmas gifts, and my mom gives Marin a Christmas gift, and it's a, it's a family picture inside of this frame, a great family picture. A little bit later, a few days later, my mom comes over to our house and she sees the family picture on the wall in a different frame. <laughs> and then it's still the Christmas season and we go to the same Christmas party and what do you know, there's the frame in the white elephant gift pile. <laughs> and now there's an offense that has been handed back to her. I don't know if I have any more or not. Do I have any good stories in here? Oh, here's one more. We, we had uh, Christmas at our house. The next year we go to their house and Marin asked my mom, hey Jeannie, what can, I, what can I make? What can I bring? And she says, you know what? You go ahead and bring green bean casserole, right? The staple for like every Christmas Thanksgiving meal, right? Green bean casserole. And, and, and she says, okay, and she brings it over. And as she's setting it on the counter, uh, my mom opens up the oven and pulls one out, a green bean casserole out. And Mary says, didn't you ask me to make that? She says, well, I just wanted to make sure that we had a good one for this, this meal. And now my mom has handed Marin this offense. And, and here's what happens. Marin takes this offense. You can hold on to it. Just hold it quick. You're holding it. Sorry. She takes this offense, and now she's at home at night laying in bed thinking, man, does she not trust my cooking? Thinking, man, I hosted Christmas last year and it was great. She must not really love me. She must not really appreciate me doing that. She must think I'm a horrible cook. And here's what Satan does. He goes, you are so right. They, they, don't, they don't love you. She just did that to be nice to you, for, for you to do that. She thinks you're a terrible cook. She, she probably doesn't even like you. And now what, what happens is Marin buries it down deep. Can you get in there? There we go. She buries it down and, and it, stays, it stays there. 
But what I said is, the, the, the closer the relationship, the greater the opportunity. The more intimate the relationship, the more infinite the possibilities, right? We, we see that there's infinite possibilities because of how intimate the relationship is. And all these offenses begin to come. And, and maybe she says, uh, she gets a haircut and Marin doesn't compliment her haircut. Or, or she doesn't say anything about her new shirt. Or uh, mom comes over and she says, do you ever clean this house? Right? <laughs> or maybe uh, Barrett gets a Christmas present, a, a pair of pajamas, and he never gets to wear them. Or, or maybe mom tells Marin how to parent, and she says that you aren't doing it right. And thing after thing, offense after offense come, and what happens is they don't talk about it. They just bury it down. They hold on to it, and they, they don't talk to each other about it. They just put it down into the ground, and they don't deal with it. You don't realize it's happening because it's just one small offense at a time. But before you know it, what started as one small offense now is a fence that divides them. You see, offense builds a fence. Offense, it, it, it builds this fence. And now my mom's in this, this prison of offense, but it wasn't her that put, it wasn't Marin that put her in the prison. It was her building it. It was her holding it. It was her not dealing with it and building it up and letting it get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not, it's not the other person that puts you in that prison. It's you. You are the one that, that leads it to, to dividing the relationship by not dealing with it. So how do we get back to this? How do we get back to them being friends? Here, here it is. <laughs> they might have to deal with some stuff after this is all done. <laughs> how do you deal with it? You have to learn to drop it. You have to learn to drop it. You can't control what's given to you. You can't control what's handed to you, but you can control what you do with it. And you have to learn to drop it. So many times we hold on to it and we build it up and it gets bigger and bigger. Thank you guys, you can go sit down. Give it up for them for helping me. We have to learn to drop it. Satan, he wants us to, to take it and bury it down deep and let it d divide us from the other person but we have to learn to drop it. This doesn't divide you from someone else. That's easy, this is easy to walk over. This is easy to talk through. When a fence is built, you, you can't see the other person on the other side. You, you can't have an easy conversation with them. It's, it's dirty in front of you. We have to learn to drop it. The, it that verse, it talks about how if, if you have a fence, if, you have, if you're harboring a fence against your brother, against your neighbor, that you can't even come to church and offer up a gift at the altar properly. You can't even properly connect with God until you deal with it. I think there's some people in here tonight who you need to begin to deal with some stuff. You need to be, begin to drop some stuff, to let, let go of it, to, to let it drop to the ground. Louis Schmid says this, it says, forgiveness is letting the prisoner free and finding out that that prisoner was you. Forgiveness is setting the prisoner free and realizing I, I was the one who was being held captive here. I was the one who was, who was the prisoner in this situation. Jesus says you have to deal with this quickly or it won't end well for you. We have to learn to let things roll off our back. We have to learn to forgive quickly, to realize that maybe they didn't mean it. Maybe it wasn't on purpose that they said that. Maybe they didn't do that on purpose. Maybe they did, right? But, but we have this relationship with, with Jesus who died on a cross, had every right to be offended, knowing that, that we will make mistake after mistake, that we'll say sorry so many times, and he drops it. If, if, he could, if Jesus could forgive us for every offense we ever committed against him, what offense is it that, someone, that we have the right to hold on to that someone gives to us? He, he's forgiven us time after time. Why do we have the right to hold on to something? We have to learn to forgive. And maybe you're here tonight and, and there's someone here that you need to forgive. Maybe it's uh, someone in this room. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's someone uh, on staff here that, that's unintentionally hurt you. Maybe it's someone in the church. Maybe it's uh, your neighbor, whoever it is, and you need to forgive them. Many times you forgive someone and they, they didn't even know that, that they hurt you. And, and you're walking around with this unforgiveness and they didn't even know that, that you're upset at them. 
but you need to learn to drop some stuff tonight. And, and maybe it's tonight here in the church. Maybe it's when you get home. Maybe it's this week. You need to spend some time and just forgive some people or ask for forgiveness. You know you've hurt some people and you need to ask for forgiveness. Well, we need to be the bigger people here. You want to have a, a healthy family during Christmas. Don't, let, don't hold on to grudges. Don't let things that your, your mother-in-law says to you, don't, don't let that build up into this fence. So here's, I want to end tonight a little differently, a little more like a, a youth service, if you will, but I think it'll be uh, good for us. I'm going to pray here in just a moment, and then they're going to put some questions up on the screen, and I just want you to group up with one to four other people, so groups of two to five, and just talk through some of these questions. Be honest with the people around you. Be honest with God. Maybe when you're done with that, you need to spend some time here at the altar. You need to find someone and forgive them, what, whatever it may be. But we're going to go through a few different questions up here of just talking through this and, and growing together as a family because we don't just, uh, church isn't just sitting in, in rows. It's being in a circle, right? It, it's talking and growing together as a family. So we're going to spend some time doing that tonight. Um, but I'm going to pray and then we can go into that time. Dear Jesus, I thank you for every person here tonight, God, that they, uh, that they made it here to church tonight, God, that wherever they're at in life, that you have them here for a reason. I thank you that even though we offend you so many times, even though we go against your words so many times, that you forgive us time after time, and I pray that we would learn from you, God. I pray that we would learn to forgive people around us, that we would not harbor offense, that we would not build up a fence that divides us from other people, but we would learn to drop it. And that we would grow closer to you through that, God. I pray you bless conversations that are had, that we could be honest with our, with our family, with our brothers, with our sisters. God, that we would just grow uh, in our relationship with you and in our relationships with each other. And that as a church, that we would forgive each person just as quick as quickly as we're offended. Pray you bless this time in your name we pray, amen.